Okay, so in this third lecture of the chapter 15, let's continue with this discussion of the thermodynamic processes. So now we are going to move to another one, which is the adiabatic process. So this kind of process um, is a process that happens so fast that the system doesn't get the time to exchange heat. Okay, so there is no heat flow into or out of the system because it happens really fast. This is the kind of uh, process that happens, for example, uh, in the engines of cars, and we'll discuss this later. And so when you have this explosion, um, um, when it happens so fast that the, the system doesn't get the time to exchange heat. Okay? So adiabatic process is that, is a process that happens really fast. And if we don't exchange heat, if Q is zero, in this adiabatic kind of process, what happens if we look at the first law? Well, delta U, again, is equal to Q, but Q is zero. So the only thing that we are going to get is the work done by the system. So delta U is minus the work. So this is what we have in an adiabatic process. So it's this very fast, explosive expansion of our gas, if we think about an ideal gas. And... Um, so um, no heat, okay? All right, um, in this graph here, what we, what we are doing is we are comparing two different processes, the isothermal and the adiabatic. So suppose I would give you this plot and not tell you which one is the isothermal and which one is the adiabatic. I would only tell you they both start with the same pressure and volume, so these two processes happen with the same pressure and uh, same volume, so they both start at this point A here, okay, so same pressure PA and same volume VA, and they both end at the same volume. This point B and C is the same volume, VB and VC, but they are equal, okay? Which one is the isothermal and which one is the adiabatic? Suppose you had to decide that. Well, you see in the plot already that this top one is the isothermal and this one is the adiabatic. How do we know that if we had only these two curves, the top one has to be the isothermal? Well, what is the story about the isothermal? We said that, um, oh, I wanted to say, we said that for, for the um, isothermal, we have that PA, VA, in our case here, right, the PA, VA here, is equal, is going to be equal to the end PB, VB, because it doesn't change. No? The temperature does not change. So this is the isothermal. Now what happens to the adiabatic? In the adiabatic, this is the process here. So what is happening here? Well, if the system is doing work, and uh, so it's doing work is negative, the temperature is going to decrease. In adiabatic process, the temperature decreases. All right, so so this this is for the isothermal. For the a uh, for the adiabatic, we have P A V A is going to be equal to another P. I'm going to call it P C and the V C, which is the same as the V B. We said that. Huh? Well, so oops, I made a big mistake here. Huh? So this is the initial point of the adiabatic, and this is the final point of the adiabatic. What can we say about these two different points, about these two different temperatures, this temperature Ta and this temperature Tc? Well, we said, we said here that the temperature decreases in the adiabatic process. So we know that the Ta is larger than the Tc, right? While for the isothermal process, the Ta is equal to this one. No, I, I'm going to call it Ta again, is no, the, because the process is isothermal. Okay, so we know then that this point here, the C point, has to be below the B point. No, both have the same volumes, so the pressure has to decrease. No, the pressure for the C has to be smaller than the pressure for the B because of this because the temperature, the final temperature in the adiabatic process, the Tc has to be smaller than the Ta. Now, so if the Tc 
Now the CC, which is this uh, PC VC, is, is has to be smaller than the PB VB. Is this clear? Should let, should I repeat? So let me put the the plot again. They both started at the same point, PA VA. All right, PA and PA. The isothermal will end up here, where this PB VB is equal to the PA VA. Yeah? So PA VA has to be equal to PB VB because this is an isothermal. Yeah? So this is the case of the isothermal process. So if I'm going to draw now an um, adiabatic process starting at the same point here, PA, VA, well, where do I have to end up? Somewhere below. Now, below because this temperature here, this temperature that I'm going to call TC, has to be below this temperature, which is the TA. Now, so here is TA everywhere. So the TC has to be below. So that's why the red curve would be our adiabatic curve below the isothermal. All right? Okay. In addition to the adiabatic process, uh, we see here two other kinds. One is called isobaric. Iso, again, the same, equal, baric. Well, remember in chapter 10 that we talk about the barometer. The barometer was the instrument to measure pressure. Right? So isobaric means the process that happens with a constant pressure. This is the plot that you see here. You, you, you go from A to B, you have an expansion, you have work, but the pressure doesn't change. It's an isobaric process. Okay? This other process here, what we have is the volume doesn't change. If I go from A to B or if I go from B to A, you see that the volume doesn't change. So this kind of process is called isovolumetric. What can we say for sure about an isovolumetric process? Well, if the volume does not change, there is no work, right? Because work is, uh, needs a displacement. So if volume does not change, the work here is zero. Okay, let's go to the next slide and play a little bit more with uh, these two processes, the uh, isobaric and the isovolumetric. Uh, for the isovolumetric, you see what we already said before. In an isovolumetric process, the volume does not change, so work is zero. Let's talk a little bit about the isobaric, where the pressure is constant. What are we writing here? We say that in this kind of um, process, we have work done, right? Because we change, um, we change um, volume. No? So this is the isobaric process. The pressure is constant as I go from A to B, but the volume is changing. So we have work, and we are trying to find what is the equation for this work. The equation for this work is going to be the pressure that does not change multiplied by the change in volume, which is understandable. Well, how can we justify this equation? Let's go back to our definition of work. Work is force multiplied by the displacement. Well, what is force? Force is pressure multiplied by area, right? You remember these equations, right? That um, we had back then in chapter um, 10. We said, we said that pressure is force divided by area. So in this case here we are saying that force is pressure multiplied by area. Okay, so this way work, which is force multiplied by the displacement, well, instead of force I'm writing pressure multiplied by area and multiplied by the displacement. This whole thing here is the volume, is the change in volume. Uh, the area in this particular case is constant and we have just uh, the expansion like like the problem of the piston that we said before and we were at this volume VA and then we expanded to this new volume VB so this is the displacement and you see that the volume has changed so all this to say that an equation for work under constant pressure is 
that value of the pressure doesn't, that doesn't change multiply by delta V, which is our change in volume. So we got here an equation for the work. Okay, let's come back to this slide. Here in this uh, plot, they are just giving us some examples of um, three processes that we already discussed. This one is an isothermal process, so PAVA should be equal to PBVB. No? So this line here is the line of an isothermal process. Uh, we also have here this line of isobaric process, no? where the pressure does not change. I can go from point B to D if I'm compressing, if the system is compressing, or we can go from D to B if the system is expanding, but the pressure is not changing, so isobaric. And uh, this line here between A and D is an isovolumetric. The pressure is changing, but the volume is not. Very well. This nice uh, table here summarizes all of the processes that we talked here, these four processes. And it's a very nice table, it has everything, but let's um, write this table together um, here. The first process that we talked about was, let me erase this so we have more space, the first process that we talked about was the isothermal. Okay, so let's have it here. And what did we say about the isothermal? What is the special feature of isothermal? Temperature is constant. If temperature is constant, we know that if we go for the first law, we know that delta U does not change. Now, if delta T temperature does not change, delta U is zero, so Q is equal to um, the work. So all the Q that is being injected in the system is going to be used for work. Okay, then we talked uh, about the isobaric. The isobaric, what did we say? The iso in the isobaric is the pressure that is constant. Okay, the pressure is constant. Well, we can have Q, we can have work, but there was an interesting equation for work which was that work is that constant pressure multiplied by the change in volume. Uh, according to the first law here, we have that the delta U is Q minus this work, which is P delta V. Okay, so these are the two important equations uh, for the isobaric process, which you can also see uh, here. No? So, Instead, in, in my notes, I wrote delta U is equal to Q minus work. Here they are writing Q. And uh, what is the equation for this work? P multiplied by delta V, constant pressure. Okay, the other process that we see is the isovolumetric. So let's write it here. The isovolumetric, isovolumetric is the process where what doesn't change now, the volume. Well, if the volume does not change, what can we say about work? Nothing. If there is no displacement, there is no work. If there is no change in volume, there is no work. So what happens now to the um, first law? Well, what do we have here? Delta U is equal to Q. The change in internal energy, the change in temperature here is only caused by heat. And uh, that's what you're seeing here. Uh, Q is equal to delta U. And finally, uh, the last one that we discussed is the adiabatic. Uh, so the adiabatic. In the adiabatic, well, there is not one of these P or V or T that is constant. What happens in the adiabatic is it happens so fast that we have no exchange of heat. So Q is zero. So that means that the delta U is minus the work. What we have in this case, uh, the change in temperature, the temperature decreases in an adiabatic process when we have a very fast expansion. So let's have a look at our summary here. Then isothermal, Q is the whole uh, injected energies used for us to get work done. Isobaric, we have both, we have Q and work. Yeah? So you see that 
change in temperature is not just caused by energy injected. We have also work um, adding to this um, story. Here, in this case of isovolumetric, there is no work, so the change in temperature is only due to um, heat. In this other one, there is no heat, there is no energy being injected on the adiabatics. So the change in temperature in the system is only caused by the work. See, so try not to associate changing temperature with heat. It's not only that, uh, it can have uh, heat and work, like in the case of the isobaric. It may have even just work, as in the case of the adiabatics, okay? Very well, so um, that's enough. What we are going to be doing in the next lecture will be to be uh, solving problems with uh, these thermodynamic processes.